Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Olivia Daig. And I'm Jimmy Wicks. We begin tonight with another rainy day on campus. The question is, when will we see the sun again? Let's get right over to Lauren Brandt for a first look at the forecast. Yeah, guys, we are still pretty dreary outside taking a live look at radar. We aren't clear just quite yet. We are going to have some rain move into the area, um, but looking at campus can it is still pretty dreary outside. Bailey Coyle is actually on the South Oval. Bailey, tell us what you see. Yeah, Lauren, uh, you know, a couple of hours ago it hadn't rained, but you know, it's just as I was walking outside, it started raining. Lucky me, right? Well, as this rain picks up, students are picking up their pace walking to class and those umbrellas are going up. Now, before the shower started, campus was drying up and those isolated floods weren't as common. But with this shower, those floods are rapidly picking up. So if you're going to be on campus tonight, I'd recommend an umbrella and some rain boots. Now back to you in that dry, warm studio, Lauren. Thanks, Bailey. Our rain, we're going to be looking at rain potential for next week. We are also going to be looking at some chilly days ahead and your Valentine's Day forecast coming up. Thanks, Lauren. And if you're rushing to file your taxes early, you might want to wait. Last year, 18 states handed out some sort of rebate, and the IRS isn't quite sure how to tax those on a federal level. CNN's Ivan Rodriguez has the story. A state that issued some sort of rebate last year, experts say you should hold off on rushing to file your taxes. That's because the IRS is still scratching their heads over how to tax them. While the checks handed out by states likely won't be taxed at the state level, they may be subject to income tax at the federal level. That the IRS is going state by state and looking at the details of these proposals or these, uh, the, you know, the details of these rebate checks and deciding whether they're taxable. And it's coming late in the process. Uh, that is the fundamental problem here. At least 18 states issued a special payment of some kind in 2022. Jared Walksack from the Tax Foundation says they were for a variety of reasons. Uh, sometimes it's been about inflation, sometimes it's just the money. In a couple of states, uh, it's been targeted, uh, maybe for, say, uh, individuals with children. But what should you do if you already filed and you received one of those checks? The standard way to approach this is an amended return, but don't do it yet because you want to wait to know what the IRS tells you to do. You don't want to do this three times. With the ever-changing tax code, Walksack says there's another thing to look out for this year. Be aware of the way that this post-pandemic era has changed how you live and work. Uh, generally speaking, states can tax you where you live and where you earn income. This is the downside, the trade-off with the flexibility a lot of people have with remote work or flexible work arrangements that they may owe taxes to multiple states. In Atlanta, I'm Ivan Rodriguez. While Oklahoma residents were not issued rebates last year, the IRS is still advising to wait for additional clarification. The deadline to file your taxes is April 18th. At last night's State of the Union address, President Joe Biden discussed an issue that directly relates to Oklahoma's economy. Gaylord News reporter Brianna Brown is in Washington, D.C. with reactions from Oklahoma representatives. As predicted, Oklahoma's congressional delegation, all Republicans, reacted negatively to the president's address. But they were surprised that Joe Biden spoke on an important issue to Oklahoma's economy. Before the president's speech, newly elected Oklahoma Congressman Josh Burkeen was skeptical President Biden would talk about an issue important to the state, oil and gas and energy independence. I, I can't imagine that he's going to talk about uh, energy dominance. <laughs> in the oil and gas sector, which is um, something that Oklahoma has been a driving force for our economy. But President Biden did speak about energy independence, oil, and that oil, shocked the, Tulsa uh, Congressman oil refineries Kevin anyway, so why should we invest in them? I said, we're going to need oil for at least another decade, and that's going to exceed <laughs> and beyond that. We're going to need it. He's never said that before. It wasn't in his script. I'm sure his staff members had to be going crazy, couldn't believe that he said that. But that's truly, that was the, probably the most authentic, truthful moment that he had all night, is that we need oil and gas in this country. Oklahoma's senior Senator James Lankford was also critical of the president's speech, reacting on social media. 
Uh, oil's going to be around for a long time because there's no way to do any kind of energy transition in the next decade. So literally what he's saying is we're going to use oil for a decade. That means all of us that have a gas-powered vehicle or a diesel-powered truck, 10 years from now, you're not going to be able to have that. The tone of the president's speech was one of cooperation between Democrats and Republicans, but judging by their reaction, Republicans aren't buying into it. In Washington, D.C., Brianna Brown, Gaylord News. Now on to a local organization working to help Turkish earthquake victims. Morgan Martin has that and the rest of today's national and international headlines from the News Center. One Oklahoma nonprofit is helping Turkish earthquake victims. The Raindrop Turkish House connects civilians to resources and jobs. It's now partnering with an earthquake response campaign to collect donations through their Facebook page. And according to a report by the New York Times, a former Memphis police officer took a picture of Tyree Nichols before his death and sent it to at least six other people. One officer admitted to sending a photograph of Nichols to at least two other officers. The Memphis Police Department has since fired the five officers involved and charged them with Nichols' murder. And one Tulsa man's ordinary coffee run turned out to be everything but. Earlier this week, Jesse O'Dell ordered a few cups of joe from his neighborhood Starbucks. Days later, the Odell family noticed they were charged over $4,000. Starbucks sent checks to compensate the family, but they bounced. The family's now waiting for new checks to arrive. And an update on the Southwest meltdown last December that left 2 million people stranded. The airline's CEO and pilot's union leader will testify to Congress Thursday. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Morgan. February is Black History Month, and the African American Services and Programs Department is holding events all month long. OU Nightly's Carly Murray was at the Black History Month event this morning. After campus being closed last week due to inclement weather conditions, Black History Month events are in full swing. This is really just to get people acquainted with the black community again, and there's no better time to do it than during Black History Month. The event tabled 15 student organizations, food, and music to create a space for students to connect. I think it's really imperative that we do something like this just because, especially when you're an incoming student, uh, it's a little discombobulating whenever you get to OU. Um, things move really fast on this campus and sometimes it's for the best and sometimes it becomes a little bit difficult. Um, this year we had a lot of transfer students uh, coming in alongside the freshmen, so we also wanted to give just any, everybody the opportunity to be able to experience spaces where they can be themselves or open that door for them to be introduced to all of these organizations. And what OU student Tanae Fletcher is looking forward to the most? And when we're all together, like there's so many faces that you do know, but then there's also a lot of faces that you don't recognize. And so being able to meet new people, meet new black faces is always super exciting for me. And I feel like we're doing a service to our community by being able to present all these to people and provide food and drinks and music and just have a good time. The celebration continues tomorrow. There will be a trap spelling bee game night at 6 p.m. in the Meacham Auditorium. Auditorium. Reporting from Jim Thorpe, Carly Murray, OU Nightly. If you want to go to any other events this month, be sure to look at the African American Program Services Instagram at OU underscore AFAMPS. And happening tomorrow, OU Health Services is hosting its fifth annual HIV testing event. The event runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the second floor of the Union. Health Services says walk ins are welcome and the tests are free and confidential. Doctors encourage everyone between the ages of 13 and 64 to get tested at least once in their lifetime. After ice storms hitting Texas again, power is still not fully restored. Find out how neighbors are lending a helping hand next in Earth Report. A local nonprofit is rolling into the metro. See how they're helping Oklahomans fight food insecurity. Coming right up. My home state and our neighbors to the south are still feeling the effects of last week's winter storm. Eli Millard has that and more in today's Earth Report. After last week's ice storm, more than 10,000 customers in Texas are still without power, according to poweroutage.us. The Austin City Council says it is gaining ground on recovery, but much more work is needed. 
The city says crews are working around the clock to clear debris and restore power. Austin Energy claims that power may not be restored until Sunday. At least 26 people are dead as a result of, of wildfires in Chile. Experts say hundreds of fires are burning in Chile's woodland. Over the past week, they say the same amount of acres have burned than what the country typically loses over an entire year. Authorities say Chile is seeing the hottest temperatures it's ever seen before, which are contributing to the fires. Rescuers conducted an 800-mile rescue mission. A large whale got caught in fishing gear and dragged the gear over the open ocean. The whale was first spotted off the coast of North Carolina. Rescuers chased the whale to Nova Scotia, where they eventually freed it from the gear. The crew stated that the large mammal was given a new chance of life. And guys, get out your binoculars and eagle eyes. Each Saturday until March 4th, eagle watches will take place at Beaver's Bend in southeastern Oklahoma. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Eli. The Oklahoma County Health Department is finding ways to help people eat healthier. OU Nightly's Carly Vargas has the story. Every Friday, the Oklahoma City Mobile Market makes its way around the metro. From churches to the Diversity Center, the idea is to help people year-round. They provide free produce bags to the community, and so um, that's what you're seeing today is um, they're giving away free produce. The health department is providing to anyone in need, people and pets, by giving away free produce and pet food. Our mission is basically to help fight food insecurities, so we like to partner up with uh, food pantries and people who give out uh, people food, human food, and we try to provide for the pets at the same time. With the line around the block, many were eager to get food for themselves and their pets. You can find them all over Oklahoma City if you look at Pet Food Pantry and at OKC Health on Twitter. Reporting from Oklahoma City, Carly Vargas, OU Nightly. The mobile market can be found every Friday and the last Saturday of the month. OU is helping current and future students explore their college careers. More on how this event is getting high schoolers college ready coming up next. And OU Nightly's meteorologist Lauren Brand is tackling, is tracking, excuse me, more rain. Lauren? Yeah, guys, we aren't out of the clear just quite yet. I'm going to have more on that up next in Maine Weather. Welcome back to OU Nightly. We are looking at their current rainfall amounts right now. Norman has gotten 1.1 inches and it's definitely, we definitely needed all of this. Um, just a little bit less here in Oklahoma City and here even down in Idaho, they're getting a much more rain down there, but again, desperately needed. Um, but looking at this system, it's still low, it's still out uh, west of Oklahoma, but it's slowly making its way in, bringing in some dry air and pushing all of that moisture out. Um, but looking at our air mass forecast, like I said, that low is out um, there and it's going to slowly be bringing in some rain and storms and even ha down here in the southeast, they could be seeing some severe weather in the upcoming weeks, but that shouldn't affect anything here. All of those storms have already moved out of the area and it's going to continue to move there through here. Um, and continue that we should see some more seasonal weather here. Um, I'm sure for the Super Bowl forecast, I'm sure you guys very really like that. Um, and then your Valentine's Day, we should be pretty decent temperatures, um, like I said, but again, we should see some more seasonal temps and making our way through. But by, look at your hour by hour, we are gonna be in the upper 30s and kind of staying around that range. Um, shouldn't be too windy around, uh, 14, 15 miles an hour, just a little bit dreary out there, but looking at our lows tonight, we're gonna be 38 here in Norman, and also looking at our highs for tomorrow, we're warming up just a little bit, 51 here in Norman, just a little bit cooler in Oklahoma City, and then over in Guyman, we are gonna be at 40 degrees, so just a little bit cooler out there, but Friday, we are going to be seeing some pretty gusty winds and that wind chill, it's gonna feel like 16 degrees, so make sure you bring that jacket with you to class Friday morning. Looking at your seven day, like I said, we're gonna be 51 on Thursday, cooling down just a little bit, but just in time for your Super Bowl Sunday, we are going to be warming back up. Monday, we're gonna have some rain chances going into next week, and then Wednesday looks beautiful. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Lauren. Norman High School students joined OU students during the annual Majors and Minors Fair earlier today at the Memorial Union Ballroom. Students explored more than 170 majors and minors OU offers. Some students were also entered into a raffle to win a scholarship. 
students who pre-registered, who checked in, who came to the fair, they're going to be entered into a drawing for a $1,000 scholarship. I mean, that's amazing. The event highlighted over 170 degree options and is aimed to help learn which major and minor best suits you. And Jimmy, Super Bowl 57, just days away. We're going to catch up with some of our former Sooners. That's right. OU Knightley's own Pierce Leffelholtz and Dakota McDowell Wakapichi are live in Scottsdale with the latest. Pierce, Dakota? Welcome to Scottsdale, Arizona. It's quite beautiful. The fans are just down the road for an event. And the Chiefs are just down the road for Super Bowl 57. Yeah, and Sooners here in Arizona and back in Norman are receiving praise. Find out who? Sports is next. Welcome back. Here in Scottsdale, Arizona, the Kansas City Chiefs and four former Sooners are staying here for Super Bowl 57. Yeah, including Shawnee, Oklahoma product Creed Humphrey, who just made his first Pro Bowl in only his second year in the NFL. The Chiefs Center talked about how OU and his former offensive line coach Bill Biedenboe helped prepare him for this moment. For sure, Coach B is, you know, probably the best college football coach and uh, college football offensive line coach in America. So, uh, you know, I've just I've learned so much from him, and he prepared me, you know, to be able to be making a good contribution to this league right away. So, uh, yeah, definitely prepared me on the mental side, on you know, the technique side of everything. So it's, it's it was definitely a blessing having him. Now, Humphrey isn't the only chief hailing from OU in the Sooner State. James Winchester, a native of Washington, Oklahoma, had high praise for Humphrey and a strong start to his career. Yeah, man, Creed's a beast. Um, he's had an incredible year, and honestly, he did the same thing last year. Um, had a great season. Um, I arguably could have been Pro Bowl last year, and uh, man, Creed's just such a great guy. And, um, you know, I I've watched his career at Oklahoma, and and uh, so to get to join up with him as a, another native Okie and, uh, you know, alumni of the university and get to beat up with the Chiefs and play here, it's pretty special. Humphrey Winchester will take the field on Sunday for Super Bowl 57 alongside four former Sooners, the most out of any college. Yeah, we're going to toss it to Parker Abels inside Studio A. Reporting in Scottsdale for Pierce Leppelholtz, I'm Dakota McDowell-Wapkichi, OU Knightley. Thanks, Pierce and Dakota. Well, last night in local high school hoops, Weatherford defeated Anadarko 4-2. to two. Yeah, you heard that right. 4-2. to two. People in Oklahoma believe that maybe there should be a shot clock, but the OSSAA talks about why Oklahoma schools don't have any. But that is a bearing on it, is the cost factor. And for some schools, that is uh, a big consideration, not just the initial capital outlay, but then the night to night, the week to week of running that shot clock. And that's, that's the thing of having that additional person at the scores table, um, in addition to not just that person, but someone who is knowledgeable. The Sooners women's team won a nail biter last night in Waco 98 to 92 in OT. The Sooners, tra Sooners trailed by five with just 20 seconds left in regulation, but that didn't stop Taylor Robertson and the Sooners from getting a big-time road win. And Tuesday night, Lakers forward LeBron James put up 38, making him the all-time leading scorer in NBA history, passing the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who held the record for over 39 years. But the Thunder had to go and rain on King James' parade, topping his Lakers 133 to 130. And with that record, LeBron cements his legacy as the second greatest player of all time. Right, Jimmy? Parker, we do not have enough time in the show to get into that argument, but last night was surely special, but I'm here for it to show out. Yeah, guys, come on. Um, up next, a city in Washington claims they might be one of the luckiest places to buy a Powerball ticket. Coming up next. Thank you for watching OU Nightly. Good night.